Has this ever happened to you? You're outside looking up and admiring the beauty of the night sky when all of a sudden you think to yourself, wow, I've got to show this to someone. You get the overwhelming urge to capture this moment and share this unique feeling, but then when you go to take a video, it's like the night sky is camera shy. So, you use your DSLR camera instead, you switch to video mode, and same problem. Why can't we capture the night sky in video the same way we see it with our eyes? Well actually, we can. But the issue is, the light from the stars is so dim that 99% of modern cameras aren't capable of recording its magnificence. So, in today's video, I'm going to be letting you in on a secret. I'm going to be showing you the camera that I've recorded every single episode of Astronomical with, and I'm going to be using scenes from the series to explain the settings I've used to capture the night sky in all its glory, with a camera you can buy today for as little as $300. I'm Damon Scotting, and this is Astronomical. So when I was first looking at cameras to shoot this series, the first and most important thing I needed was for the cameras to be able to shoot well in low light and ideally record the night sky in real time. That's the most important part because you'll see pictures and time lapses of the night sky, but they're all long exposure photographs. I want to be able to talk about the night sky as you are seeing it in real time. And that's what I'm doing right now. Now, one of the most iconic parts of the constellation of Orion is Betelgeuse. Now you'll see Betelgeuse on the top right hand side here. It's known as a shoulder star. Betelgeuse is a super red giant. But perhaps you're not looking to film yourself on the beach talking about stars going supernova. Instead, you just want to capture all the wonderful objects in our night sky. Well, then you'll be happy to know that this camera is great at capturing even the fastest objects that are both relatively dim and incredibly short-lived. Meteors. I've only just begun to demonstrate the uses for this camera. Here I've set it up to record a meteor shower in real time. So as opposed to seeing a photo with one bright streak going across it, I'm going to capture the meteors themselves, shooting across our night sky, live. One of the main difficulties I've found with using this camera and this particular lens is that because the focal length is so large, it means I can't quite have myself and the stars in the same focus. But if I step out of focus for just a moment, look what happens. So as you can tell, it's very difficult to find a blend between the two. It's very impractical to film astronomical sequences when I can't get the main target in the back of the shot. The constellation itself is a sight to behold. It contains a rich variety of stars, red, white, and blue. But even the ancient Greeks couldn't have possibly envisioned the wonders that lied just beyond our naked eye capabilities. For it is no star. It's not even a planet. That bright point of light just behind me is the International Space Station. So instead of having to spend money on different types of lenses, these are a lot wider and allow me to get both of the perspectives into focus. But what if you love this hobby so much that you want to take it to the next level? This 50mm lens is one of the cheapest for this particular camera. It's very affordable, much like the camera itself, it's low cost in terms of photography, let alone using it to film the night sky. Another crucial factor is how portable this camera is. I ideally don't want it to be too heavy. And remarkably, this camera and the 50mm lens together weigh less than two cans of Coke. They are extremely lightweight. This is the Sony A7S Mark I, so it's the first version of it. There are now three models to date. The main key points to talk about is that the first model, this one, shoots at 1080p up to 100 frames per second. That's very cool, but the next model, the one that I've perhaps used even more when filming astronomical, shoots in 4K 30 frames per second. Now that's a big step up in terms of resolution. You have four times the resolution of what you do on this camera. A sextuplet star system, a true wonder of our universe, and one is visible to the naked eye. This is a neutron star. Do you see that small cluster of stars just above my head? These are the Pleiades, otherwise known as the Seven Sisters. And this is how to spot the Perseid meteor shower. But I'm going to be honest, there isn't that much of a difference. Now obviously in resolution there is, but I mean when it comes to recording the night sky, one thing we have to account for is that we're using a very high ISO in order to capture 
as many stars and as much light as possible. Now this is what sets this camera apart from all the rest. The ISO of the camera is the way in which we adjust its sensitivity to light. By increasing the ISO, we increase our camera's light gathering capabilities, which is what makes this camera so special. But there is a catch in terms of quality which means our images become a lot more noisy. And with that, the quality of the actual video footage itself tends to be reduced by quite a bit. When recording the Starlink satellites passing over, I was shooting in 720p. Right now I'm shooting in 1080p. Undoubtedly this image quality looks better, but when the ISO is so high, the 4K resolution is comparable highly to 1080p and 720p because it is so noisy in the frame that you really can't tell the difference. So being able to buy a camera like this for under $300 is ideal for an amateur because it puts it within our range. We can shoot and capture the night sky in real time with even basic equipment like this in resolutions that may seem archaic now, such as 1080p. But the functionalities of the camera don't stop there. If I swap out the eyepiece in my telescope for this camera, then I can reveal every single deep sky object as our own eyes would perceive them. This is what the Orion Nebula looks like for a telescope. However, it doesn't have to be a telescope. Thanks to the extreme abilities of the camera's ISO settings, I can use long lenses with high focal ratios that still allow me to capture the universe in exceptional detail that our eyes cannot make out. They allow me to see more than a billion stars. It's being able to share with you what you can realistically see for a telescope that has been such a huge motivation towards me making these documentaries. If it wasn't for this camera, there would be no astronomical. I would never have managed to film any of this series and make it what I really wanted to make it. And that is me in front of the night sky and nothing else. No special effects, no illusions, just me and the universe itself in its rawest form. And I've been able to do that with such a limited budget as well. For the majority of making this series, I haven't had a job. I haven't had money to spend on expensive filming equipment. In the beginning, it was not affordable for me myself at all, which is why I'm so inspired to make these videos, because I'm hoping to showcase that this is an accessible hobby for all, which is why I've made today's video, because I want to showcase to all of you that you can capture the night sky in terrific detail in the same way that I do in my series for a fairly low cost. It doesn't have to be these expensive brand new price tags. You can do so too if you just look around for a bit. I'm Damon Scotting and this was Astronomical. <laughs>